Today we're going to discuss debt, we'll talk food for thought, we'll look at the Beretta M9, and I'll introduce a new segment called Pub Crawl, where we'll discuss Marine Corps publications. I am Simon the Zealot, and you are watching Beyond the Crossroads. Let's kick it. Today we are again going to start with uh, Food for Thought because it will explain an important principle for the big idea. This week's Food for Thought comes from Proverbs 24, 27. It goes as follows. Put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. What this proverb is saying is that it is important to implement a plan in proper order. Not all actions warrant equal attention at a given time in the plan. Prioritizing what needs to happen first will make all subsequent steps easier. With that in mind, let's talk about today's big idea. I had a Marine ask me recently what he should invest money in to grow his wealth. To which I replied, if you have any debt, paying it off would be your best investment. So let's think about what debt is. Debt is you renting money from someone. So you borrow some amount that you have to pay back. That's called the principal. And you pay an additional rate for the opportunity to borrow it. That's the interest. By agreeing to borrow money and paying it back with interest, you become the investment for a lender. They're giving up a certain amount of money. And when you pay it back, they end up with more money than they've surrendered. If the goal of investment is to increase how much money you have in your hands, then paying off debt accomplishes this goal by limiting how much money you are obligated to surrender. The quicker you pay off debt, the more money you get to keep. To break this down further, let's look at four specific reasons as to why paying off debt should be a priority. And when I say paying off debt, I mean paying it off ahead of schedule, which means paying more than the lender is asking you for every month. The first reason is that in reducing your principal, you will get charged less interest. Since lenders charge interest based on the amount that you borrowed, reducing that amount reduces what they can charge you interest on. Second, the cost for you to borrow money is most likely greater than the return that you can make on traditional investments. If your lender is charging you more than what you're earning on your investment, you are losing money. Let's look at a simple static example. Say you open up a certificate of deposit, which is earning you 3%, but your credit card is charging you 23%. If your certificate of deposit has the same balance as your credit card, you would have to pay out 20% more than you brought in per month. Furthermore, it's important to understand that investments need time to work, but debt demands upkeep monthly. Neither your investments nor your debt are on your schedule. So trying to outrun one with the other is less prudent than settling accounts with your lenders first, then looking for ways to grow your money. Third reason, having debt reduces your usable income because it diverts part of what you earn to your obligations right off the bat. If you earn $1,000 a month, but 300 of that is due to a lender, you're really only making 700. You're earning the other 300, but it's not yours because you already used it when you took out the loan. Fourth reason, debt is an obligation that hangs over your head until it's paid off, and as a result, can cause a tremendous amount of stress. While lenders may have some compassion on account of hard times, the bottom line is that they want their money back with interest. They're not going to take losses on account of your bad day. Here, I want to compare and contrast debt with a subscription. Let's say you're paying the same amount for a school loan and for a cable subscription. If something goes wrong in your life, you can always cancel the subscription. You can't cancel the debt. You're on the hook for that and will continue to be regardless of your circumstances. The bottom line with those four points is that debt is a leech on your financial lifeblood. 
For those four reasons, you should want to carry as little debt as possible. If you are carrying debt and want to reduce your debt balance, you need to attack it on two fronts, new debt and old debt. What I mean by new debt is don't take on more debt or control how much debt you're taking on. This is related to my video on spending, but I'll give you a quick example. Let's say you need a car. First question to ask, can I buy a reliable vehicle with the cash that I have available? Or how much cash can I commit to a car? If you determine that you absolutely need to take out a car loan, ask yourself this second question. What kind of dependable car can I buy with the smallest loan possible? You're going to have to be disciplined here. If you can just barely afford a BMW, maybe just get a Hyundai for the time being. Riding around in style is not worth hamstringing your future. As far as old debt, you need to attack the principal by paying whatever you can above the minimum payment. Debt is like a fire. You can't partially put it out. You have to snuff it at the source or it will keep burning. And what you're burning here is your own hard-earned money. These aren't technical terms, but let's say that you can split old debt into two piles, loans and credit. A loan is debt that is distributed to you one time and you can spend some number of months paying it back. This includes school loans, car loans, mortgage, etc. Credit, on the other hand, is debt that is distributed to you on demand, think credit cards, and doesn't really have any expiration date so long as you pay the minimum. As you can imagine, this kind of debt, credit, is dangerous because a minimum payment may well be entirely interest, and you are on the hook indefinitely because you haven't reduced the amount of money that the company is charging you interest on. Now, credit cards have notoriously high interest rates, typically 20% or more. If you're paying just the minimum, this is strictly profit for the credit card uh, companies. As with anything else in your finances, you want to get the whole picture. Figure out what debt you have and how much each lender is charging you. That should aid you in assembling a plan for paying down your debt. My personal approach when I got my act together on this was to pay credit cards off first and to pay off the balance each month. After that, I paid off the smaller loans regardless of interest. Cutting ties with a lender was a moral victory and also freed up that monthly payment for other uses, including paying more towards the bigger loans. To wrap this up, I'll share three final thoughts. First, this video applies to the average person who is making decisions under normal circumstances. I'm sure that there's someone somewhere who has had to take on debt under duress or some other unusual circumstance, and there may be people who are maintaining debt for some strategic reason or who have some unusual type of debt that I didn't address. Ultimately, you are behind the wheel and I'm offering suggestions. For all I know, you may have the opportunity to invest and maintain debt at the same time. If you have a loan with a uh, very low interest rate, for example, and a surefire investment opportunity comes up, you may want to take it. Do the math yourself and see what makes sense. Second, in the absence of extenuating circumstances, I want to emphasize that you need to be aggressive with paying off your debt. The longer you take to pay off your debt, the more interest you're going to pay. Attack the principal and multiply your savings. Third, definitely look for incentives, but be careful. Credit card companies and other lenders offer promotional rates or rewards for using their money, but it's not out of the kindness of their hearts. They're offering those incentives because they're hoping that you carry a balance that they can charge you interest for every month once that promotional rate expires or you get cozy with the rewards. Use these incentives to your advantage, but don't let them hook you. If you've got a debt problem, remember, you dug yourself into that hole by overspending and you're going to have to dig yourself out by underspending. If you got into debt by living above your means, you need to live below your means to get out. If you're not finding a lot of extra money for this purpose, just remember, it is your own money that you are burning by maintaining debt. Look at your lifestyle and see if you can cut anything out. 
Your future prospects depend on it. Give me something to shoot. This week's weapon of the week is the Beretta M9, which is the sidearm most widely used in the Marine Corps and is a sidearm that officers and staff non-commissioned officers qualify on. Here are the technical specifications for the M9. The one thing that I'll mention is that the M9 is chambered for 9mm by 19mm cartridges. The model I'm field stripping is a 92FS, which is the civilian version of the M9. The base model for both is the Beretta 92, designed by the Pietro Beretta Arms Company, which does business in the United States as Beretta USA Corporation. Beretta is the oldest firearms parts manufacturer in the world, fulfilling its first large-scale order for the Arsenal of Venice in 1526. Beretta has been owned and operated by the Beretta family for 15 generations to this day. The Beretta 92 design was based on earlier Beretta pistols, namely the M1922 and M1951, with technological influence from the German Walter P38 as well. The Beretta 92 design was completed in 1975 production began in 1976, and the United States military adopted the sidearm in 1985. In 2017, Beretta lost the U.S. military contract to Sig Sauer's P320, though there's no definite timetable for the Marine Corps to phase out its M9s. For more on the specs of the Beretta 92 variants and the differences between the M9 and P320, I'll leave links below. Two terms that are useful to understand when handling the M9 are single action and double action. These terms apply to hammer-fired pistols like the M9. Double action means that when the hammer is down, a single pull of the trigger will bring the hammer back and subsequently cause it to fall. The two actions are the hammer being brought back, then falling. Single action describes the latter action in that sequence. You can either cock the hammer manually or the slide will cock it as the result of the pistol firing. What these terms mean for you practically is that a double action requires that you apply greater force to the trigger because the hammer must be brought back. Subsequent pulls of the trigger will be single action and will not require as much force to be applied to the trigger because the hammer is already cocked. Set the course. In this segment, I will summarize key ideas from Marine Corps publications. Today, we are going to look at MCDP-1 Warfighting, which is a publication that every Marine will read at some point in their career. Specifically, we're going to look at Chapter 1, The Nature of War, Section 1, War Defined. This publication begins by defining war as a violent clash of interests between or among organized groups characterized by the use of military force. Traditionally, wars have been fought by nation states, but they can include any group with the ability to generate enough organized violence to have significant political consequences. Furthermore, the essence of war is defined as a violent struggle between two wills, each trying to impose itself on the other, uh, and this can be achieved by organized application or threat of violence. And finally, the object of war is to impose our will on the enemy. The publication also puts war fighting in the context of total war and perfect peace, which are two extremes between which a range of political, economic, and ideological relationships exist, relationships upon which militaries are sometimes called to act. So that's it for today's show. Any questions, comments, suggestions, or requests, let me know. Thank you for watching, and as always, remember, it is not about you. Stay hungry, stay humble, stay out of trouble. Take care. I'm about to drop the hammer.